way I operate, because I told you, I don't write. I, I never write it down. I wrote... Do you have a list of headings? Do you have I, have, I have a list of... Uh, ten it's, subjects. It's, yes, yeah. just maybe ten, Parachuting. fifteen. Yeah. It says parachute, alcohol, marijuana, army, you know, holiday, camera, right. things like that. Yeah. And I look over. I just... I go, when I go for a drink, I look at the list, and three things come... Spectacles. Things like that, because I'm getting older, I wear glasses and all that, you know, and all, it all gets jumbled up and comes out sometimes in a very odd order and, and creates something new. The only thing I ever, I wrote the history of Scotland down in headlines, but the, I did a thing many, many years ago that I couldn't do now if I was asked on bended knee. It's the, the crucifixion and the Last Supper. I did that, and then Glasgow University came in and asked, could I put it in the archive? Uh, that they have, and and I and I had to write it down. So I went and I got an album and I listened and and sort of dictated to myself, wrote it. That's the only thing I've ever written down. Did you think that crucifixion uh, sketch or part of your story, part of your act, was that deliberately intended to shock? No, I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard. It was funny, but I've never shocked on purpose in my life. Were you trying to say this is what Christ might have gone through if he'd been here today, in a no, serious way, or not? I didn't know. I didn't think that for a second. But I always have believed that uh, Christians tend to miss out on the humour of Christ. You know, of, of uh, they, they seem to be awful dreary to me when, when when they're supposedly followers of a guy who was incredibly exciting. You know, when you look at his life, he was an exciting guy. And if you look at the company he chose to be with, he was a good laugh, I think, you know. And, uh, and they, they don't see... They, it's always mystified me that they dress in black to, to represent such a bright guy. Did that cause a great scandal at the time? At the time. But the funniest thing was, I found that... Uh, this tends to irritate people when I say it, but it's the truth. I found that devout people or staunch people in Scotland, you're either devout or staunch, if you're a Catholic, you're devout. If you're a Protestant, you're staunch. For some reason, you're, you're never a devout Protestant and a staunch Catholic. But uh, people who, who actually took part in the religion and, and sincerely believed and lived it tended to either poo-poo it as nothing, like throwing meringues at a brick wall, which was the right attitude, or they said, God, that's a really interesting line you've taken there. And, and then they would go into the thing about Jesus having a sense of humor. That was the two lines that took. But people who gave lip service to religion, bigots would attack me loud and long. And I was hit once by a Jesus freak. He punched me. And, and I think if I was him, I would have punched me too, you know. But he, he, he was wearing badges and all that about how much Jesus loves him, you know. And, uh, and he had a swing at me. He was totally incensed by it. But funnily enough, I, I did find that people who were kind of staunch and devout and active in the religion, and so even some ministers, priests on the quiet would say they liked it, they didn't announce it, but ministers would come up in public and say, my God, that was funny, well done. A lot of your stuff then, and, and still to some extent now, was, was rude, it was about uh, bodily functions, yes. it was about pissing yes. and shitting and yes. farting and masturbating and hemorrhoids. Yes. Why, is all, why is that so it, it, interesting? I why is it so funny? It. I thought it's just, <laughs> it, it, was the, it was the vulnerability of it you know, the, of all these bits. When you get your trousers down, you're vulnerable. Sex, or the toilet, or, or, or hemorrhoids, or itching, and or, or a busy street itching there. Oh, God, what am I going to do? The vulnerability just made for humor. It's just mad. And nobody was doing it. And it became, the, the crutch became my area, you know. And I, I tell you, I was, I was so proud once. And if, I'll tell you where I was. I was in Wick. Uh, up at John O'Groats and in the hotel, it was a kind of dreary night in the hotel, and a man came over with the wee half glasses and a tweedy suit, and he said, my God, I admire your work. Would you write for me? And I said, well, what do you do? And he, he this is, a tr he, he was a doctor, but, but he, his job, he was a specialist in those colostomy bag things, and he was going round the country lecturing these poor people who, who have to wear them on the latest developments uh, on, on this kind of stuff. And he said, and I've heard you doing the hemorrhoids. He said, he said, I didn't believe anybody could do 40 minutes in hemorrhoids. He said, so could you do something in colostomy bags? 
for, for me, for, is it because I'm really dreary? <laughs> and I was so flattered, you know. So we sat down and we tried to think of funny things. And I'm sure I'm the guy who came up with a, the worst thing about a colostomy bag is finding shoes to match and stuff. You know, and I, said, I was trying to tell him the, the angle to come from. Uh, uh, the difference between you then and now to outward appearance is that the beard is gone. And yeah. The hair's a bit quaffed now. Well, you see, you, you ha if you unquaff your hair, see that hair I had, it went on fire once. Uh, a guy, a singer songwriter, a very famous fellow, poured, pulled a big lump out of it when I was trying to punch him. And, and that was, he, he did that, and then the following night somebody set fire to it at a party. And that's why it was that shape, you know, it became that, organically became that wonderful thing. And I, I was immensely fond of it because it changed every day. Every day was a wee adventure. But then for a play or a film or something, I had to get it shaped up. And, uh, and it, once it's in shape, you can't unshape it. It just won't do it. So it has become this thing. I took the beard off for a movie and I was desperate to anyway. I'd had the beard for 26 years. Did you take it off yourself? Yes, I did. It's 26 years I had it. Did you have to use a cutthroat razor to get no, it? No, I didn't. I did it with scissors, or, or the, the no, I did it with the with the sideburns trimmer of my razor first, and then and the, and then a wee scissory bit, and then I shaved it. It was oh god, I, I looked like a potato. I, I was kind of hoping I might be handsome. I had harboured this for 26 years. I thought, well, you know, I've I've got a, a second bite at this. Maybe underneath this. There's this handsome guy, you know, I'll, I'll whip this off and people go, gasp, look at him. Shaved potato, I couldn't believe it, I was really depressed. But uh, w once you've had it for a few days, you don't look so round anymore, you know, it kind of evens itself. <laughs> but do you feel different with it off? No, you don't feel a thing, that's the thing, it's because when you've got a beard, you're the only one in the world who can't see it, right? So you, you, so you, don't, feel, you don't feel the least bit different, but people's expressions towards you change. It's, it's so odd, but they kind of admire it. When you do something as big as that, people like it. And, but the, I think they like you to have a purpose. If, if you just whipped it off on a whim, they would say, oh, well, come on, I like the beard. But if you took it off as I did for a film, they say, oh, well, good on him, that was a brave move. You know?